hello guys welcome back to AIC and today I want to talk about actuarial science um, I received a lot of people asking me um, questions about actuarial science um, just more about the career about studying actuarial science and just a lot of like stuff on how to navigate around the resources for actuarial science so this kind of made me um, feel like there are limited resources or like limited opportunities out there for people who want to pursue actuarial science especially those back home and i just wanted to share some actuarial science resources from like mentorship programs to like schools scholarships and getting through the exams or getting started with the exams so yeah um i passed my exam i studied for that exam and i finally passed it and so i am preparing for my third one hopefully in a week i'll start preparing i am ready to keep tackling the exams i think that's the best advice I've received from other quali from other actuaries that are qualified is that um, keep taking the exams as much as you can, keep going forward and you know just keep doing your best until you gain your fellowship or and so on. I want to start off with the fact that everyone's journey is different so what worked for me may not work for you. But then I'm just like sharing general resources or like resources that I feel like really help me in um, my study, my in my journey as an actuarial um, student, as well as just somebody trying to develop myself in this career. So yeah, first thing first, when it comes to schools, um, a lot of people ask me. Um, for example, high school kids ask me, oh, they want to study actuarial science, but they don't really know like which schools to go to or like how to apply for those courses. And I just want to share that um, from a perspective of like being in the USA, I know that in terms of schools, it's easy to find a school where you can study actuarial science because you can find those schools on the SOA website. They actually now have an opportunity to um, showcase those schools on their website around USA. But I also want to point out that um, just because you want to study actuarial science doesn't mean you need to major in actuarial science. At least that's for the American system. You can major in something pretty much related such as um, mathematics, such as uh, statistics, such as um, maybe physics. Yeah, you can major in something like that and then take your actuarial exams because what's important is the actuarial professional exams um i know a lot of math majors who didn't major in actuarial science but took the professional exams to just kind of like you know show that you are interested in actually pursuing the career and you know what you want you know um so yeah that's with the schools but then in terms of like for those who are at home and they don't really know where to go because I know that in Namibia, um, we don't have the field or the course in our universities. So you kind of need to get out and um, study actuarial science somewhere. And so because South Africa is the country that's next to us and it's one of the countries in Africa with the best actuarial science program. Um, like I said in my previous videos, I have a friend who is attending um, UCT in South Africa and some of you that reached out I connected you with that friend of mine and I just think that definitely the journey is a bit different but like I said everyone's journey is different and unique so for example if you already studied something in your university in Namibia you may be exempted to do the whole four years maybe you just do a bridging course for two years or something like that and then you start taking your training and your exams um if maybe you're just coming straight from high school depending on your grades you could be accepted directly into the program um four or five years i'm not sure what the year is in terms of like the south african system but then also depending on your high school grades you can be accepted directly into the program or you may need to do a modular program and then bridge later to the actuarial science program 
but then with the american system it's really straightforward um you go to college you get your bachelor's degree for four years in actuarial science or something related like mathematics and then um you while also going to college you start taking your exams because it's becoming really competitive as well i know that long time ago people didn't really have to worry about um like passing a lot of exams undergrad but then now it's common for people to take exams um undergrad people are passing two three four exams undergrad and um starting off their career with um some exams passed and that's very important as well and i'll talk more about the exams later on as well so this takes us back to the next thing which is scholarships or financial resources um for those who attended uwc because i know that there are some people who also comment who attended uwc or are attending uwc um obviously qualifying for the davis scholarship is a major thing in usa and then you also get the scholarships from the school as well but one thing personally that really helped me and connected me to a lot of other resources in the actuarial science field is that these are the actuarial um scholarships my first scholarship which is um from the international association of black actuaries is a major scholarship um they give you um support um you can apply um for one year two years whatsoever for example you need if you want to apply again for the next year you need to reapply but then the entire program is just really useful apart from the fact that they help financially they also connect you to met to their mentorship program it's a lot of networking i can't even stress enough or like just express my gratitude on just what this organization has done for me and my career development um I've met an amazing mentor because you get a mentor if you are a scholarship recipient. So that's the International Association of Black Actuaries. And um, so I believe that you need to be in an American school. I think I know that. Yeah, I believe maybe like maybe the islands. I'm not sure, but definitely American school, maybe Canadian, probably because those are also very much related when it comes to the system and the actuarial uh, process of taking the exams so yeah um they connect you to a mentor they pair you up with a mentor and i got lucky to have a really amazing mentor he's very supportive we get along um i catch up with him um when we all can and it's just it's an opportunity to just have someone who's also just motivating you when you feel like you know you are down or you don't feel as motivated as you should be um Another thing is definitely the networking opportunities. This year I had an opportunity to attend the virtual annual meeting. I had an opportunity to meet other members of the organization, They're really, really incredible people. And just the fact that you get an opportunity to meet other black actuaries out there. I think also studying actuarial science in the Midwest where it's uh, predominantly uh, the white community, it has been a bit hard when, when it comes to my career because um, going to conferences or seminars or anywhere you most of the times so are like the black the only black student or whatsoever so i mean it just felt different being surrounded by people kind of like the same kind of people as you you can relate to some stuff you can talk about some stuff that maybe um that are affecting the career as well that not like the general group talks about so that that has been an incredible experience for me with the international association of black actuaries and i just wanted to give you guys that broad view of what else they do for you apart from the financial package that they give you so in my junior year um i got awarded i think it was 2500 and now that i'm going to my senior year i reapplied and i got the scholarship again and i think it's 3000 yeah i believe it's 3000 the second resource is the actuarial diversity scholarship this is by the actuarial foundation um this also helped me a lot in my junior year i got awarded um i think 3000 and senior year it was like 4000 so this is helping me a lot i think as an international student um we can all relate to some financial burdens that you can get from being an international student in an american university as much as we have really huge scholarships which i'm really grateful for you have a lot of other things that you worry about such as international taxes such as scholarship taxes and a lot of other things that we have to worry about and so this scholarship helped me a lot it 
um, just released a lot of financial burden and it's available to um, mainly minority groups that need to be represented in the profession so anyone can apply but then another thing that i want to point out is that on the actuarial foundation if you search up actuarial foundation you'll see that they always have sponsoring uh, scholarship opportunities there so those two are the ones that i qualify for um but there are a lot of other scholarship opportunities available for actuarial students not just students of color or like minority groups but like all students studying actuarial science in USA or Canada whatsoever. So I suggest that you guys search those things up. Definitely the the internet is your best friend. You need to keep going back. You need to research. If you really want to do something, especially with actuarial science, you just don't find information everywhere about actuarial science. So you need to be intentional about your search. You need to be intentional about your research. Do as much research as you can try to get people and that takes me to my mentorship um my mentoring point try to get mentors in the actual profession try to connect with people that are in the similar profession as you want that's the one you want to get into try to connect with people my main form of connection is definitely linkedin i've met amazing actuaries or just people who are in the insurance industry and know a thing about actuarial science i've communicated to them i approached them if i have any questions some we you know we kept in contact and we kept in touch and that's really nice because you get an opportunity to know stuff that you didn't know you knew you get an opportunity to know companies that you didn't know existed and all of that so definitely um keep your network system broad be intentional with connecting with people and creating a good networking system for your actuarial science um you know field um it's it's not easy i know it's not easy but like i said um i just wanted to shoot this video to share some resources out there use linkedin i can't stress this enough i think linkedin is a good platform to just connect with people and to just build yourself professionally as well you get good advice there you get to be motivated as well when i say other actuarial students you know pursuing their exams doing well getting internships i think for me that's motivation it pushes me to do good and be a better version of myself as well because i'm like if another person can do it then i can obviously also do it so do connect with linkedin and keep being active on there um and then um my last thing definitely the exams i will say again the same way as studying actuarial science in college university differs by country uh, the exams also differ the professional exams differ and um in america they also differ as well according to the industry or the insurance industry you want to get into as you go further or as you keep pursuing your exams um so for example if you take up the soa track um that's mainly for those in life or health or retirement whatsoever or investment banking um you you end up taking a different uh track i think after your third exam yeah after ifm you start taking that track and then for those who want to go more of the cash or road which is more like pnc or property and casualty um you can also take that um after your third exam but the first three exams they are common for everyone who wants to pursue the professional exams only after the third one then you can start specializing depending on which industry you are in or which industry you want to get into but also on that note in terms of the exams i wanted to share with you guys some of the exam resources that i've used for my two exams um firstly when i started studying i bought a textbook but then i realized how slow my studying as my how slow my studying was especially because i was also taking like classes and stuff and i just felt like reading a book was just not making me as effective and so i attended a seminar in a like at a company once and um i've had people talk about coaching actuaries and i searched it up and after that i've never gone back to anything else i've been using coaching actuaries for my two exams and they've been amazing i've also adapted to useful studying strategies so i always buy the full um package so learn and adapt so i learn also because i'm a visual learner so i always watch videos and then when i watch the videos i do quizzes or like 
you know there are quizzes at the end of every chapter so that really helps you in knowing if you know the concepts or not but then that's the thing with the actual exams is you need to know the stuff but you also need to know how to take the exam and that's where the adapt comes in the adapt you need to practice the uh, exams and that also helps me a lot i dedicate at least a month to just do practice exams there are three hours exams so then i need to do this exam um at least every other day um so i do an exam and then the next day i go through all the questions even those that i got right i always try to go through them to see if they are like a shorter methods or shorter ways to get to the answer um in comparison to my thought process when i solve that specific question so because sometimes you find yourself spending so much time on one question and that's a really huge mistake in the actual exams so coaching actuaries has been an exam resource for me i use it in terms of learning it's useful in terms of practicing it's useful you also get end level so when you keep practicing your end level keeps increasing when you keep passing the exams and that means you keep taking the exams on different levels and then when you reach an higher a higher end level you start taking higher like or more difficult exams and then as a result you can actually feel much more comfortable and then one thing i've also realized is that once you start taking um coaching actuaries exams on level five and above and you start passing them really well you can almost assure that you pass the actual exam so for me it's a good starting strategy because i feel like because i always do independent studying i never actually know if i'm ready or not because it's just so unpredictable but then using coaching actuaries kind of at least helps me analyze or evaluate how ready or how not ready i am depending on my end level as well as if i'm passing the exams on specific levels so yeah um that's with the exams um i'm not so educated or informed about other exams in other um associations or societies of other countries so it's a bit hard for example south africa i know that they have exam exemptions so for example if i guess if you studied a specific course that um you have done some concerts that already appear in a specific exam then you are exempted for that exam but um for the usa um everybody writes their professional exams their first professional exams um you don't really get ex exempted just because you did a specific course at your school except for the v uh, double e uh, vee -E requirements you can get that from the soa website if you show that you have covered the content or stuff in um your school courses but everything else you kind of still need to go through it doesn't matter what you did in your college or university so yeah guys that's it from me um that's it um um i think this is something that i wanted to share with you guys for a really long time especially because i've been receiving dms on instagram people are really interested and it's a bit hard because people are all over the place they're like all over the world and i can't give you direct or specific answers but i can share with you guys at least from my journey or like what i know or where to go to and like i said the internet is your best friend like go on the internet if you don't think you can study actual science in your country or where you are like research go on google look up the geographical location of where you want to be or where you can be look at the look up the financial um aid or financial help that you can get um by attending a specific university in that country and then look up the universities and what they require for their program because every country every area or every school is gonna have a different requirement for their programs and admissions so yeah that's it thank you guys for tuning in i appreciate the support and i will see you next time bye